Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. If this is your first or second time worshiping with us, welcome. We are so blessed by you, and we want to get to know you more. Please feel free to contact the church. All information is on our website, aplc.org. Over the past nine months, Pastor Bill Swatner has served as our interim. What a blessing Pastor Bill has been to Abiding Presence. His insight and preaching and sense of humor and dedication to the gospel has provided this congregation with so much. He will make an appearance now and again to supply for us when needed. I don't know about you, but I have thoroughly enjoyed Pastor Bill and his family. Thank you, Bill, for your ministry and your service. As Pastor Bill concludes his time with Abiding Presence, we welcome our new intern, Stephen Swanson. Next weekend, Stephen will bless his time with us in worship as he begins his ministry and his internship. If you want to meet our new intern, I invite you to look on our YouTube channel, Abiding Presence, for an introduction video and an interview with me. Let us now turn our hearts and our minds to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our heart through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 55, beginning at verse 1. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which, is, which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. The hand of the of all creatures look to you and you give them their food into season you open wide your hand grant the desires of all who live the hand of the Lord feeds us he answers all are just in all your ways and loving in all your deeds. You are close to all who call you, who call on you from their hearts. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. reading from Romans chapter 9 beginning at verse 1. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah.
who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hey kids, I invite you to come on close to the screen so we can have our children's sermon time. There's a a lesson that we're going to hear in just a second, and it's about Jesus feeding 5,000 people. There's a whole lot of people that have gathered together, and Jesus finds a way to feed them all. And the disciples are really concerned. They want them to go away. They want the crowd to go away uh, uh, so that way they can find something to eat for themselves. And Jesus says, no, you give them something to eat. And the disciples, all they had with them were five loaves of bread and two fish. They said, surely this isn't enough. And Jesus took what was given to him, and he broke it, and he blessed it, and then he gave it to those disciples and said, now go serve them. And as the disciples went out, all were fed. Now, we don't really know what happened to that bread or what happened to those fish. When I was a kid, I used to think that when Jesus broke it, they just started to multiply into more loaves of bread, and they were just all scattered all over the place, because at the end of the story, we find out that there's 12 baskets of leftovers. That's a lot from only five loaves and two fish. I heard someone once that told me that, well, all of a sudden, the disciples were walking around, and they came to a family, and they said, well, we have some bread here for you. And that family says, oh, you know what? I also have some bread here. Take this bread and you can help serve other people with it. And then another person said, well, I have some more fish. And all of a sudden, everybody was serving each other. And they were using all that they had. And it was multiplying as it went all over the place. And I just think what a beautiful image that is, that they took what they had and served other people with it. We have a ministry that we're involved in here at Abiding Presence, and we go down to Haven for Hope, and it's a place that people where they may not, may not have a home right now find a way to get to a place where they can have a home. We've been serving them meals and helping out sometimes with coffee and cookies, but we're not able to do that right now. So we asked them, what do you need? And they said, you know what? We need shoes. So we let the congregation know that we need some shoes, and you know what happened? shoes started showing up. People were going into their closets, and they were taking out shoes that they might not wear anymore, or they were going to stores and buying more shoes because they had money that they could do that with. And we have a whole pile of shoes waiting to go there. Maybe you have an extra pair of shoes. Maybe you've grown out of a pair of shoes. But as we start to share the things that we've been blessed with, things can multiply, and they can serve others. And this is just one way. I'm sure you could probably talk to your family about others. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you real soon. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns, and when he went ashore, he saw great crowds, and he had compassion for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, The disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that we may go into the villages and buy food. They may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and he looked up to heaven, and he blessed and broke the loaves, and he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowd. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Food is one of the most common images throughout the Bible. Um, We find it in the story of creation, where plants and trees were given to us by God for food. Manna was given to the Israelites as they wandered through the desert. In the Psalms, the psalmist cries out that food is nourishing us, and that's what the laws of God are, are the food that nourishes us. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, which literally means house of bread. And He was born in a manger, which is a food trough. At one point in time, Jesus proclaims, I am the bread of life. He spends a lot of time around food and around meals, and a lot of neat things happen during these times. He heals Peter's mother-in-law, and then she feeds Jesus. Jesus talks to His disciples about where place at the table to sit and to not be too proud about their place. The feet of Jesus are anointed at a meal, He's challenged by a woman to include everyone as she's begging for scraps at a table while he's eating with officials. Martha is preparing a meal, and she learns a valuable and important lesson from Jesus. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus is made known in the breaking of the bread, and today we have the feeding of the 5,000. Now, this is a story that we all know pretty well. Five loaves, two fish, They feed a multitude of people, and the disciples are astonished at all of the leftovers. It's a story about grief, about compassion, about service, and abundance. But before we dig in, let us ask God to open our hearts and minds to receive what has been offered in Scripture and the courage to go out and share it abundantly. Please pray with me. Gracious God, as we take your word, may it bless us to break free from selfishness and self-centeredness, to serve others by giving away what you have so freely given. We pray in your name. Amen. At my first call in Burton, Texas, when a funeral would happen, the entire congregation would jump into action. Um, members of the community would jump into action. And I always remembered um, Nora Lee when she would bring her green bean casserole, or Shirley would put together all the sandwiches, and she made the best pimento cheese sandwiches. Virginia would have the richest and the tastiest desserts, and there would be this banquet, this huge meal that would happen, and it was built around love and service that was being freely given for the sake of others. And honestly, I, I, I still miss those pimento cheese sandwiches. Now, at Abiding Presence, it's a little different. And I was astonished whenever I came to learn that this community of faith serves others in these times of loss, but in a different way. We have a team of people called the Care Committee, and they are amazing. These people come together to serve families and friends at every funeral or memorial service. And they gather inside the kitchen and they're cutting up all the fruits and they put out lunch meats and croissants and they get coffee made in the fancy urn. And they set all the tables with tablecloths and real silverware and it's a sight to see. Members of the community also help out as well as they start to bring in desserts and there's cakes and there's cookies. And as the banquet is taking place, The care committee is working behind the scenes to make sure that the drinks are filled and the tables remain plentiful. So that way, the family can enjoy the people that have gathered to grieve and and to remember the loved one, not to think about what they need to serve or, or trying to be a host. These acts of service are given freely and are absolutely beautiful. Now, I bring this up because The feeding of the 5,000 is really a funeral banquet. It's a meal that happens right after the death of a loved one. Jesus just heard that John the Baptist has been killed, and he's mourning, and he's grieving, and he tries to actually go off and be by himself. But people start showing up, and they need to be healed. And the crowd starts growing and growing and growing, and Jesus, even in his grief, serves them with compassion, and He heals and cures their sick. The disciples can see their Master. He's serving so many people in the middle of all of this pain and this loss, and it makes sense that 
Maybe they just want to protect them. And I can just hear James looking at Jesus saying, it's getting kind of late. Why don't we let them just go and find something to eat? And Jesus turns and looks at his disciples and says, serve them. You give them something to eat. But all we have are five loaves and two fish. And then he takes those few items that have been gathered and he blesses them. And then he breaks the bread and he gives it away. And we all know that they ate and were filled and everyone left with to-go boxes. I'd like to imagine that all those leftovers were given away to others who weren't able to be there that day. In his uh, book, From Tablet to Table, Leonard Sweet writes about this. There's this pattern that occurs around the meals with Jesus, and we just heard it happen feeding the multitude on the lawn. It happens at the road to Emmaus, and it also happens at the Last Supper. Jesus takes something, he blesses what's been taken, he breaks what's been blessed, and then he gives away what was broken. And that becomes the miracle in the lives of others. And it's so beautiful because this is the very nature of Christ, the bread of life. Jesus is blessed, broken, and given away for us. The greatest miracle of all. I think the disciples thought maybe Jesus was more like the manna in the wilderness. You know, just enough bread to see them through that day. But Christ came to be bread for them. And Christ came to be bread for us, blessed, broken, and given for us. And the good news is that we can do the same thing. For Christ has provided us a sacred way of living to emulate. The problem is, is that it's hard to take what is given to us when our fists are closed with hate and division or resentment. And it's hard to bless when we're judging others by color or opinion or status, or if they do or don't wear a face mask. It's hard to break when we hoard selfishly, looking only after our own well-being, and then all of a sudden there's no toilet paper on the shelves. It's hard to give away when we're blinded by this selfish nature, closed off to the needs of others, when Jesus is clearly calling us to serve, telling us, you, you give them something to eat. The only way to feed others is by feeding them Christ. By taking Christ, blessing our time together with Christ, breaking free of keeping it to ourselves, and giving it away. Christ is made known through us when we take, bless, break, and give away what's been so freely given. And as we do, we are emulating our Lord and Savior until He comes and get in glory to call us to dine at that banquet with all the communion of saints. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe Believe in in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I I believe believe in in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's God's only Son, Son, our Lord, who was was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was was crucified, crucified, died, died, and was buried. He He descended descended into the dead. dead. On the third day he rose rose again. again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager. Bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation through our use of fossil fuels. Replenish groundwater supplies, especially in the Edwards Aquifer. Provide needed rains in places of drought and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation abiding presence such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those that you are gathered with. Text somebody or call somebody right now. Peace be with you. Lisa, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Take, bless, break, and give. These actions of Jesus are for us to follow and to emulate. This model of service can be clearly understood through the sharing of our gifts. I take what's given to me. I offer it up as a blessing. I break free from holding it to myself, and I give it away for others. Abiding presence is so grateful for all that you give away. Thank you for your continued generosity.
God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Your word is a light for our path. Nourish us through this gift that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. We continue with the thanksgiving for the word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.